over to our spotlights, starting with the shark upgrade. Jennifer. Of the shark charities. If you are wondering why we codenamed the network MP17 upgrade called Shred, a uh, core contributor of this upgrade and Ground Zero decided to pop in one of the one was super casual with me saying that, hey, I've been surfing with some sharks uh, in my vacation time. And I'm like, oh, great, cool those to that. Uh, but anyhow, uh, there's a lot of amazing flips that's in will be included in the network MV17 upgrade. So we're enabling beneficiary address for storage providers, which is one way towards a um, better lending market for SPs. Uh, with FEM, it will be even better, I believe. Uh, thanks to Cuba, we are resolved a six significant weakening of Filecoin Polar Security uh, Guarantee concern uh, in this upgrade as well. Uh, we are focused on enabling programmable storage market uh, to, um, you know, towards an FVM launch, a uh, FIB41 and FIB45 are for that special call out to the decoupling Falcon Plus from Marketplace. This is our star, our blue heart of this upgrade. Uh, so we are decoupled, uh, we are making data cap and the QAP it brings um, to the um, to the sector to start trying to restore them to actually be associated with the data itself instead of the deal. And uh, so now you can basically, the client or anyone who cares about the, the data that's stored on Filecoin can, can you know, have the term on the data cap and extend that term if they want. So that storage provider will store that data as long as possible on the Falcon network. It's a huge step towards user program um, both storage market. And yes, we're introducing our first fungible token contract. It's a data cap actor. It's going to be one of the built-in actor that will be shipped in this release. I link the fungible token standard and the token contract library uh, in the slide. Uh, if you're interested in it, it's very early stage. So we're going to iterate over the time. Um, but if you have experience on that, uh, please participate in the conversation. Um, uh, I don't want to forget about FIP44, which is thanks to a huge, uh, we are enabling any metadata authentication for user data actor. Uh, we are trying to set a good foundation for a lot of use case that can be deployed with FBVM uh, before the next network upgrade. Uh, so that's our goal. Uh, as mentioned, uh, FIP36 currently is being in pulled out right now. Uh, if yet the community, the ecosystem decide the FIP is accepted because of the uh, time sensitivity, we have the core dev have agreed that if you were accepted, we will include that in, in the uh, network in the shark uh, upgrade. Uh, and we, because uh, it's extending the sector max lifetime, uh, we also want to make sure our pull rep, uh lifetime security is secure. So we are considering finalized uh, uh, 47 as well uh, in this upgrade. A uh, rough timeline, we're still targeting mid-October uh, for the calibration upgrade and uh, early mid-November. Uh, uh, for the main upgrades, thanks to Sandground in North Cuba, uh, a year's job for all the development, also shamelessly plug in. We're doing a Lotus data onboarding and friends summit at Phil Lisbon uh, on November the 2nd. The whole team will be there. If you have any question about the shark, let us know. We will we'll be there. Awesome. Over to Magic for Sealing as a Service. So yeah, finally, after a whole bunch of discussions and a lot of implementation work, uh, we've landed basically all the code that's necessary on, on the Lotus side to support seeing services. This is basically just a few new APIs. What they allow Lotus to do is to import sectors which have been sealed externally. And also they may have been only partially sealed. So Myers can pay some service to do pre commit one and two for them. And then they can download those sectors and finish finish the ceiling themselves. This basically allows miners to optimize how they use hardware. Uh, this allows miners to pay other services to the ceiling for them. Maybe in the future, uh, we can extend it so that you can have service providers run all the compute needed to, to run a Falcon node, and you would only store data locally. This could let us deliver, deliver the uh, mine Falcon with a NAS on your desk uh, use case that it's possible, it's just not right now. Uh, so we can do it. Yeah, the other, other use cases that can emerge from, from this work is uh, seeing compute marketplaces, uh, which could morph into more general marketplaces later. Uh, this is also something that Bacalao could provide in the future and integrate with this. 
Uh, so yeah, there is there is a lot of very exciting features emerging from from this seemingly simple Bluetooth feature. And yeah, a lot of these things that are not possible with this is thanks to the design discussions that were had for quite some time. So yeah, if you if you want to check out how it was designed, then maybe still have more input on it. Check out the GitHub discussion. Cam hang out in the Bail Sync as a Service Slack channel. Yeah, that's that's Sync as a Service. Awesome. I know people have for a long time uh, wanted to be able to uh, be participants in the Filecoin economy with uh, devices with less, uh, you know, GPU capacity. So that's super exciting and also super exciting for all of those poor proof of work miners who now no longer have a home in Ethereum, who can maybe come and bring their services here without also having to invest in a lot of um, storage hardware. They can partner with existing SPs and just provide their um, like GPU ceiling services to help scale um, our community here, which is awesome. And so thank you for working on this magic and excited to see it come to fruition. Passing over to Steve, speaking uh -huh. of the merge. Yeah, you, you bet. So this is a simple, you know, there's not necessarily a new announcement versus last week, but it, it, uh, it's worth repeating, right? Libp2P is securing Ethereum's main, mainnet, a huge milestone here. And one of the things I love about this is just that it is very much a long-term effort, right? So there are talks back from DevCon 2 where David and Juan were, uh, you know, already started to beat this drum and talk about how they could integrate. We had great notes and ideas being brainstormed, getting a... We had a uh, you know, connected with Parity to do a Rust implementation of libp2p in 2017, 2019. We got into the Ethereum uh, networking specification. There was a whole bunch of community management work and you know implement implementation management that had to go on that Raul and others were helping lead. Uh, and there was key new functionality that had to be added, like Gossip Sub, which happened in 2020. So there's been a there's been a long journey. I love that uh, we were planting seeds six plus years ago that are now really bearing fruit today. Uh, so major, major props to um, folks in the past, like Raul, David, and Juan, and also the, the current team. You know, there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes to make sure libp2p is secure and ready for this, you know, the big moment of, of the merge. And it's, it's been successful. And so now we see a, you know, multiple libp2p implementations uh, helping secure a network of over 400,000 validators. So great job to the team. And uh, yeah, excited for more good times ahead. Awesome. Over to awesome. you, and definitely last but not least, FVM. FVM, so what's happening? Uh, there's a ton of news across the board. Uh, I've structured them in kind of like the working groups that, that we have in the FVM team. First, uh, a bunch of updates from, from engineering. We have, as others, others have announced uh, uh, previously, we have a new testnet uh, that is live, that is operated by Factor8 Solutions. Uh, this is Patrick. Uh, it is a testnet that is updated roughly every week uh, because we are conducting incremental delivery of the of the roadmap of, of FEM M2.1 uh, for the Selenium release. So this is the release that went out uh, two weeks ago. We had 63 smart contracts deployed on that network uh, with this new release that went out last week, which is Copper, it's named Copper. Uh, we had 23 smart contracts deployed on the network and we're expecting to put out a new release next week. Uh, hopefully everything will go well for this one because it's a huge one because it's gonna add full uh, JSON RPC support, uh, Ethereum JSON RPC support to Lotus, which is then going to allow uh, unlocking downstream, a lot of downstream testing effort and integration effort with native Ethereum tools like MetaMask, Remix, Foundry, because all of these actually access functionality in the Ethereum or EVM compatible network through that JSON RPC API. And also we're pushing for feature completeness of the EVM runtime, so which we are codenaming Febim uh, by adding support for for more opcodes that are still missing from that implementation that are currently panicking. Now, uh, there are several architectural changes uh, that are going into the Filecoin network to actually support all of the changes that are kind of like all, all of the structural changes that are needed uh, in the model to support things like addressing, native addressing in the Ethereum network, in, in, in EVM contracts, uh, and also to support things like uh, native Ethereum transactions that are emitted and issued from wallets like MetaMask, Wallet Connect, and so on. We want to support those out of the box. So there are two key changes that are going into, into that we're proposing 
uh, for inclusion in FEM 2.1. That's the F4 address class, uh, which uh, uh, Jennifer already mentioned a little bit about. This is a hierarchical delegated address class. So basically there will be uh, address managers on chain where the first one is gonna be an Ethereum address manager. And this is gonna be able to provide uh, different addressing identities for actors on chain such that, because normally, just, just to back up a little, the FEM is built as a polyglot runtime that is able to accommodate runtimes uh, from other chains to make that integration of um, contracts from those chains easier over and, and simple. And in many cases, those runtimes actually come with their implicit assumptions about addressing. This is usually the, the case. So having a way that we can, in the Falcon protocol, um, work with those addressing assumptions at a native level is is pretty important. This is where F4 comes comes from. A contract abstraction allows us to validate uh, Ethereum native transactions in the protocol within user space without actually having to modify the protocol. That's why that is important. And then uh, finally, we're also starting the work stream on the EVM storage footprint optimization in partnership with Consensus Lab with, with Akosh. Um, now, on the developer experience front, uh, we had a ton of success with the early builders F1 program, which focused all around uh, the native tooling. They is, there's a link in there with a blog post on everything that they built. We're graduating the F0 cohort in the next weeks. Uh, and we're starting a new cohort. This is called F1. And this one is gonna focus all around DBM and FEBM, FEBM use cases. We received 55 applications. We have select, selected 31 of those, and we've divided uh, the participants into two groups, the core group, which will get uh, very close support from the FEM team and the peer builders who will be kind of like community oriented. Now we're also incubating the developer forums and the, and the docs, uh, that's a provisional URL. Uh, that is going to be moving to a Falcon.io domain uh, soon, hopefully. Matt also published a Twitch stream deploying contracts, dem demoing how to deploy contracts on Wallaby together with Jimpick. Jimpick is also on fire. He's putting out a ton of walkthroughs on Observable HQ with like every every release that we put out there. He's the first one to just grab, put his hands on, on top of it, just experiment with it. It's just awesome to have that energy in, in, in early builders. On the product front, we're pushing for uh, designing a what's going to be the new a new network uh, in 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 five, a new Filecoin network, which is designed to be a canary network uh, as a spin-off economy from mainnet. So this is a network that is going to move fill from mainnet and um, is going to basically allow users to experiment with early technology, such as uh, the FEM before it's actually released on mainnet by using real value. Uh, we're planning to launch Buildernet if everything goes well by November the 8th. So this will be just after Phil Lisbon and all the events in Lisbon, uh, Lab Week and so on. So there will be, you'll hear a lot of drum rolls and a lot of uh, presentations around this as well to pave the way. Uh, Andy is also conducting a ton of interviews across the org to collect input around use cases that people want to build immediately on FBM. Remember, the, the, the goal and the success of FBM is not just shipping the technology, but actually building, enabling the, the building of the use cases that people are just have been waiting and dying to build for a long time. So we want to make sure that we're able to provide, that we understand what those use cases are, that we provide guidance uh, to these teams. It's likely that we're going to be putting out solution blueprints going forward uh, for some of these use cases to kind of like provide light guidance uh, on how to build things like, for example, compute over data networks or how to build L2s or how to build uh, stuff like perpetual storage and things like that that people really care about. Now, if you have a use case uh, and Adi hasn't reached out to you yet, make sure that you reach out to Adi so that he gets a chance to, to put it on the radar for, for us. This is also very important because a key epic in FEM 2.1 is actually re-engineering the built-in API, the app, the public APIs of built-in actors, uh, so that they're able to cater uh, for all those use cases that people want to build. Uh, on the audits front, we're booking uh, two external auditors for FEBIM, preparing uh, security audits. We're planning to involve the PL network at large to come and vet the code base. Um, so there's going to be some comms that go out there. Uh, we're also assembling an internal red team. So if you want to participate in reviewing and auditing the 
FEM code base as it gets closer to uh, being prepared for, for production, then reach out to Dragon here and he'll he'll add you to, to the list of potential auditors. Uh, we're also going to be inviting the research, the security research community at large to participate in, in reviewing. So we're scouting if you have like really talented security researchers that are potentially working in academia or other places or maybe like more amateur or whatever that are not really going to conduct a formal audit, but they're could be acting as white hackers trying to break a test net that make sure to get to um, to speak to Dragon as well so that we record them in, in our candidates list and we reach out to them. And uh, as for upcoming launch plans, uh, the current projection for mainnet is uh, February the 8th. Uh, if everything goes to plan, build a net. If everything goes to plan, it's scheduled to be launched on November the 8th, as I said uh, a, few, uh, a few seconds ago. And also, we're preparing our presence in Lisbon. Uh, so expect the FEM team to be there to meet with all of you, to chat with all of you about everything that you want to build, and to 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 do a ton of knowledge transfer as well. Awesome! Super exciting.